Let's fill some hard drives. Greeting and welcome to Die Dragon Die presents the Titans Gifts, Season 2, Episode 35. I am your DM and host, Marty, joined by Max, Matt, and Neil in order that they appear on one of my monitors. How is everyone doing tonight? And your mics are becoming a little bit like chestnuts when they're roasting on an open fire. Mm, mm, mm. That was remarkably descriptive. Yes. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 the like it's the song that Nat King Cole made famous again uh, or something. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Um it, the the song it's a song that reminds me of Christmas. Uh it's a song that my mother used to play every Christmas and we would torture her by sometimes grabbing the cd and then playing it incessantly <laughs> uh yeah it was good good times i worked at a bookstore for a couple of years so like right after halloween it was hey go put in all the christmas music so not i'm not a super huge fan of christmas music <laughs> for us christmas music was always bony and I'm not sure what it's up here <laughs> Uh, in high school, I had a job where I worked at a grocery store slash uh, pharmacy, and um, we would do this exercise called facing, where you'd you know bring all the products mm -hmm. to the front of the shelf, and you know like start you kind of half stock, half face. Well, I got stuck in this one corner around Christmas time, and I had already been like 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 on a long shift, so the mus the Christmas music was on like a three hour loop and it was like a nine hour shift. So it was like the third time you heard the same damn Christmas song that day. And I was stuck in this one uh in this one uh row and there are these Christmas cards like that you would open up and they would make noise. But some of them were malfunctioning or in a big bin and open and just constantly making noise. So I remember, like, I'm like 16 at the time kind of thing. Uh, I remember sift like, finally, that's it! You know, <laughs> getting up and, like, sifting through madly to find, to find the defective one. And the defective one was making noise whether it was open or shut. So managers and co uh, manager and co-workers had walked around the corner and see marty basically stomping on one of these christmas cards <laughs> just like, losing your mind yeah exactly <laughs> i had to explain that one delightful uh, yeah yeah imagine that <laughs> imagine that yeah how is everyone doing good pretty Matt's good. up first yeah no nah, i'm fine um i've been working uh, my Dwarf Fortress is going pretty well. Um, COVID's coming back with a vengeance, so I'm, you know, hunkered down to, to, to some extent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil? Yeah. I recently completed my own personal rotation of around the sun so it was my own, own annual one last happy week, birthday so nice happy birthday. Birthday. thank you thank you so you, you get some... you get stuck at what 29 29's where the counter got stuck at yeah, some, yeah. somewhere there yeah, yeah somewhere there <laughs> give or give or take a decade i suppose yeah um yeah i'm, I'm like my father-in-law he, he he says he, at his age he, he swaps the numbers around because it looks nice and small so uh <laughs> So I'm 14. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Uh, did your yeah. did your family do anything for you? Oh yeah, it was just a nice, relaxing day, and you know, it was it was actually just beautiful. Like we didn't do anything crazy. We were just all huddled and quiet and enjoying, you know, some quiet times and downtime, which is sometimes required. It's good. Um, I mean, uh, Max and I are in, and Matt, we were we were chatting about this beforehand. Like the, the topic of Christmas came up. And it's, it's crazy just to think that this year is over. This is a year that just never happened. I mean, we worked our butts off, don't get me wrong, but the year itself just never happened. Like, it's just weird. 
everything happened Bye. and it went by so fast yeah exactly and it also yep. feels like the longest decade of my life <laughs> and that was last week <laughs> right yeah exactly exactly max how about you max? max what's going on with you uh my house is a mess uh we're packing up right now getting ready for the move um so we're just kind of like all of our free time is either you know trying to decompress and and uh get some downtime in we watched um blood of zeus i don't know if you guys have heard of that um but it it's a um netflix greek themed anime so pick picture um like disney's hercules movie if it was turned into like an anime and it was pretty fun and pretty graphic cool. uh i liked it i thought it was really good um so it was, it's, it's got a good voice acting cast i, was, I thought it was great um i'm making watch a note that of, note of it right yeah now. <laughs> blood of zeus it was good um and uh, caught up on Mandalorian, and then everything else has just been like packing heads down. Don't uh, don't say anything about Mandalorian. Um, uh, I'm not. Gonna say I, I'm waiting until all the episodes are available, so, uh, so I okay. can trial the <laughs> the okay. subscription, watch all of Mandalorian in like a day or two, and then untrial <laughs> the subscription. <laughs> Fair enough. Yep. <laughs> no, we're we're avid watchers. Um, I've actually kept my Disney Plus, not because I use it a lot, but actually my wife's been using it a lot, so I don't feel bad paying for it. Um, but Ooh. yeah, ca- caught up on that, and. Uh, just packing man yeah like, it was last time that i did that i'm like oh mandalorian i'll sign up for the, for this and i'm like i don't want to watch anything else like nothing else <laughs> on that service i like so i'm on uh, the same boat yeah. she, she's found like a lot of disney movies and stuff like that that she actually just likes to have on in the background while she's packing and stuff like that so hmm. uh, and her family's been watching movies together and doing like the um uh i forget what it's called but like disney plus has the same thing that netflix has which is like watch parties kind of thing so they've been enjoying it let's see uh i'm pretty tired of all this <laughs> just in general it's just one of yeah. those days where it's like oh yeah uh, i'm looking forward to time off in december uh i realized the other day going through some boxes of gaming books that i have approximately half of all the dungeon magazines and half of all the dragon magazines so i, I sat there and looked at them and said do I complete the collection or do I get rid of them? And I decided I'll complete the collection. So I'm slowly eBaying uh, nice. missing issues of, of, of magazines. I got a, I got a big order in today. Somebody was selling like pristine copies of magazines for like $3 a pop. And I'm, I have now like as of, as of end of November, I'll have issue 150 through to the end of 370, 357, I think for for dragon uh and i'm sitting on maybe about a third of the collection for dungeon um it, it's nice. it's something to do it's it's help it's i don't know it's the crow magnon you know need to collect things <laughs> sure that that i get that 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 feeling is strong in me uh, in certain respects and i'm like nah you know what would be nice this collection and and then once the collection is complete i will read them all I, I like all the oh, ones wow. that I have not. Uh, it will be the grab five of them. <laughs> Every time you go to the washroom, you are reading. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite, um, my favorite thing from Dungeon or Dragon. I think it was Dragon Magazine. They had a list of spells that were humorous spells. Um, and my favorite spell from there was I think it was a ninth level spell. It was transmute rock to stone, reversible. And it would transmute an unlimited amount of rock to stone. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. And transmute mud to mud. I, I, dirty maybe? water. <laughs> to dirty <Yeah>. water. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh, I also uh, started another game of Seven Days to Die. I went back to that. That's been a catharsis for me. Like when you talk about collecting things, like for me, like sitting down zoning out building stuff killing zombies is a lot of fun that's cool nice nice to me that's factorial oh, i'm honest i i i can almost do i can almost do anything while i play Factorio. most of the time you, listen to an audiobook or watch a movie have you tried satisfactory no i haven't i've seen videos of it but i'm yeah, i'm yeah. going all out with the protect the collection too like i've got these sleeves 
I've got these mega these these hard hardcore magazine Ooh. sleeves, and then I've yeah. got plastic to put them in, and cardboard car, the cardboard backing Card is backs. on the way. Yeah, uh, nice. I'm also cataloging everything and like r giving them ratings, and this will be like an adult collection. Nice. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Nerdy, nerdy stuff. Super nerdy collection, but it sounds like fun. All right, why don't we do a recap of what happened last time? Uh, last time it was called Bloodsport. Uh, episode 34 of Season 2. Uh, the Jerk Samaritans visit the Pearl Cantina to place bets on Thurgus's fight against the captured Bloodveil zombie Hulk. The Professor discovers that Zalara is angered, presumably at the Professor's recent actions. Farisay starts looking for leads on the whereabouts of the Plague Doctors, in particular one Dr. Davilus. The party trades barbs with the resident wizard, Master Logram Koros, who commands the pit-fighting zombie. As the, pit, uh, as the fight in the pit begins beneath the cantina, the Professor makes contact with a being called Balbodnothep. And then, of course, we had the fight itself. Uh, I believe we got to the point where everyone was returning to the upstairs portion of the Pearl Cantina and people were beginning to line up to receive their, uh, their winnings. Um, one at a time, people would present, uh, would present the, little, uh, the little tokens that they were given. Uh, Rovacek is the one that seemed the, the uh, um, mashed pizza face tiefling. Um, uh, is the one that would read uh, read the amounts out loud and uh, Sai, the owner of the Pearl Cantina, would actually pay out. Um, Born looks like it was hired to guard the back door while this was, procession was going on and Mog uh, basically maintained the line while it was going on. Those that didn't bet or were waiting to cash in on their bets basically were partying in the Pearl Cantina. The um, The... The viciousness of the sport seems to uh, turn into a celebration at the uh, at the Pearl. Um, we're going to say that you guys, one by one, those that at least placed bets, stand in line and eventually receive your winnings. And we've already offline distributed those winnings to your character sheets. I think the person that made out like a bandit, weirdly, was Zephyros. Because Thurgus placed a bet with a plus three weapon... <laughs> Uh, a plus three market weapon uh, in Zephyrus's name. So I think the nine grand uh, or, or in change has already been added to your uh, character sheet, Zephyrus. Uh, I think all of the PCs made money, though. Um, yeah. At least some, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of people here. Um, Farisay, you notice that there are, there are even more Fey flittering around uh, the, the Pearl... Um, this this fight had brought uh, many people from the uh, surrounding neighborhood into the Pearl itself. Um, even though there is a horrible zombie plague going on in the, in the streets of the slough and likely also in the plateau and perhaps other places within Grand Station. Um, yeah. So you, Do we you get a sense of of what other people made out here. Do we know if, you know, do we know who made the biggest bet or who, who lost the most money? That's, or is it obvious just looking at the crowds? It, it, it is not obvious, but you do see Master Logram uh, drinking more than he, he has publicly. Uh, he did lose. He may have bet on his own um, horrible monster. Um, uh, there are some people that look like... Actually, give me a sense motive. Uh, the, the odds were two to one, so there are some people that, that seem to have made out, but 9,000 gold pieces? You're probably, you're probably the biggest winners. I don't think a lot of people here were betting magic items uh, on this fight. Uh, 16... Uh, is that the sense motive or? Yeah. 27 for Zephyrus. All right. Nice. Uh, 16, You you when Thurgus, if anyone is upset with your win, they are not coming anywhere near you to tell you that they're upset. Um, Zephyrus actually catches two people like, like talking, um, 
uh, talking at a table and you didn't like the way that they were looking at Bukrebeck. And then you you actually, uh, let me see. You actually met eyes with uh, with the leprechaun uh, Grady O'Bray. He's, he saw you looking at him and he, he just scowls at you. And then I was like, Rawr! and he was like, Rawr! and I was like, Rawr! did you see that part where I was like, Rawr! oh, yeah. oh, oh, this is a moment to drink. We need to drink something. You know, I keep drinking, but like, I, I, I don't feel anything. I feel like, like I'm in, I'm unstoppable. And then he continues to drink, forgetting that he has delay poison active. <laughs> <laughs> Seems about oh. as a furious will just keep him coming. <laughs> He's got all the money in the world now. <laughs> okay. Uh so you guys can easily spend, I don't know, ten gold on, on whiskey and, and drinks and uh, that sort of thing, unless you you're starting to buy rounds for the bar. Nah. We're we're, we're jerks. <laughs> we're selfish jerks. <laughs> okay. Uh the uh the evening turns into hot, sweaty, loud, drunken later evening. Um, it's been a couple hours since the fight. Um, I don't know if any of you are doing anything. I I want to start gathering some information. I'd like to to try and find out a bit more about the plague doctors and where they go and who they meet with and all of those things. Ah, Pharisee is like, look at all the people of the slew coming here. Uh, or at least enough that it's it's uh, statistically significant. If you were a math yes. if you were a mathematician, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So you you finish paying off the bards. I believe there was some complicated uh, deal that you made with them, uh, where the the group of you was going to uh, gain money from both sides. Um, I don't think you charged. Thurgus, so you ended up owing them a bit of money. That's how it ended up working, yeah. <laughs> but but you, you seem to have the confidence in these bards. They might think that you're willing to act neutral uh, uh, to all parties that are in this bar. Um, you walk away feeling like you've got a couple of contacts. Nice. How are, yeah, you, that's, go that's how are you going about asking? Are you just starting to ask random people what they what they've seen, and what specifically are you are you asking for? Well, let, I, I I know what I'm asking for, and and let me think a little a, a little bit about how to get it out of folks. Um, I, I'm curious where the plague doctors go, yep. uh, when they're here, and who they meet with. Yep. I'm curious if the plague doctors are giving out those big silver coins yep. um uh i'm curious if plague zombies attack the plague doctors too if anyone's seen any fights with them um i'm curious how many of them there are in the slough and how they arrive and how they return do they just use the lift like normal folks or okay so the first question was uh where do they go yeah okay i i would like you to make a diplomacy check to gather information and Absolutely. there were a bunch of bonuses that i gave you uh last time yeah i have um gather information points uh four of them uh from the vark the urchins the fey and the 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 benefit of, of the illusions in Thurgus's entrance. Okay, uh, because of Thurgus's um, uh, Thurgus's win, I'm going to give you an extra one, and then because you made friends with the bards and bards know things, I'm going to give you a sixth one. Each of these nice. points can be used as an aid um, on any okay. one of these rolls. Oh, and there's a fortune point for immediate use. So on your first roll, you've got a okay. plus two from the stream. Nice. I'll use the plus two on, on that. And 
first question you start asking around hey where do the plague doctors go where where do they where, yeah. where, where are they staying in the in in the city and i'll spend one of those gather info points on that too okay it's a 39 that's not bad strong 39 is super strong okay uh Ferrisse ends up narrowing down that the plague doctors are not just everywhere they have indeed established a headquarters in the slough. And I'm going to go to the map of the Grand Station. Oh, another fortune point for the next one. Cool. I'll, I'll, I'll for sure use it. Um, cool, cool. You find out yeah, that cute. they have... Um, that they've recently taken up a residence in an older um, building in the Gray District. Ah, uh, nice. That <clears throat> recently changed ownership, like they recently bought it specifically. Ah. They have called it um, the Hospice of the Blessed Maiden. It's a building that may have had some illicit operation out of it in the years before it changed hands. Okay. You think some sort of smuggling went on there? Uh, at this point, because you've gathered so many people, I'm going to say instead of d4 hours it's taking d2 hours for you to gather information all right so by the time the fight happened it was near uh you guys arrived around six o'clock and then the fight happened um uh, eight o'clock you you settled in got your money it's around 9 p.m at night all right there's there's a one for the first one okay so it's around 10 p.m the place is hopping and you have a name and a district Nice. That's a good one. Um, yeah, I've, I've run into these plague doctors wandering around. I'm curious, uh, where are they going in such a hurry? Who are they talking to? Certainly not me. Uh, you do get pointed... Oh, I, I see. Okay, give me a bluff check. Uh, sure. Uh, I can do that. Um... Uh, what is my bluff? Oh, it's also very good. Okay. 31. Okay. You don't think that you have raised any, uh, raised any suspicions. Uh, it's, it seems to be a common topic. Like, uh, sure. you do, you do gather that there might be actually be a hospice there where sick people are going. Ah. Because you kind of get the, when you start asking about the hospice, they're like, are you sick? And they, they move away from you and, uh, and you have to calm them down that you're not. Like, you know, I get a sick relative or something and, and they're like, oh yeah, go to the hospice. Lots of people are going okay. there. So I'm curious who they're meeting with outside the Gray District. Got it. Um... Sure. Give me a, that's your second question is like, who are the plague doctors going to see? Yeah. 41. I am on fire tonight. The Modron is with me and, and the fortune points are rolling, baby. Rolling yeah, like a champion. Okay. Um, with your previous role, you actually have, you know, where in the great district, it is very close to the, uh, cliff that leads up uh, uh, to the plateau. Nice, nice. 
almost in the shadow of the temple district. Yep. Who do they go and visit? Well, you kind of get like, well, they go all over the place where the plague goes, dummy. You know, like that, like that's where they go. Um, but you start to ask, like, who are they interested in seeing? Um, the people of the slough believe that only the rich get the really good healing. Yeah. And that... Um, We poor people have to fend for ourselves as always. We 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 people of the slew have to fend for ourselves always. Uh, you do get some rumors about like some other healers, possibly people who are capable of casting spells like Bukerbeck in the slew. Um. So who are they seeing? So you you understand that Dr. Davilus doesn't just do house calls for anyone. Sure, sure. Only only the really and the rich down here are the hard working are the hard working craftsmen and merchants. So he's been visiting them. You do get a very nervous person saying that. Well, Dr. Davilus visited um, Goathorn for all that was worth. Like, I think word yep. has spread that something happened to Goathorn. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. I mean, nice, when the champion nice. himself walks in wearing Goathorn's belt, come on. <laughs> Yep. Like yeah, there's that creepy thing. carriage out front, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the dancing zombie. It's yeah, it's been a mess. <laughs> there is wow. a rumor that the plague doctors seem to be very, in particular, interested in uh, inherited those of the inherited races. And you also get a you also get a rumor that you saw that they saw gray maidens and um, gray maidens arresting a bunch of vagrant uh, yondens halflings and handing them over to the uh, to the to the plague doctors to the queen's oh, physicians. Okay, okay. It was just an offhanded comment. It was more like they were probably sick and refused to get to get treated. Yeah. All right. Um I've seen a bunch of those weird coins, uh some of those big coins uh going around. Like uh like somebody stumbled onto a cache of those someplace. Um I'm curious where those are who's 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 paying who's paying with those um with the shiny ones so you're talking about the weird coins okay yeah I'm kind of curious if the plague doctors are if people see the plague doctors come come back with coins I, I'm guessing maybe no like that the that that was a bit more surreptitious but um I don't know Oh, uh, one D two. Two hours for that second gather. You get some old information that they were plucking some of the coins out of the swamp. Yeah. Um, you... Do you get some second or third hand information that the coins might be cursed? Like there's a general understanding now. You wanna, you wanna gather info for that one? Oh yeah, sorry, you didn't roll. I thought it was the forty one I'm looking at. Nope. I need to nah. 
Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm going to spend two points on that plus the the uh, fortune at 31. So that's that's not as good. That's still pretty good. But... Okay. Um, you talk to a guy whose brother is a metalsmith. And he says the coins aren't all silver. Ah, interesting. Some other metal in there. Yeah, my Are they brother. trying to cheat us? Uh, strangely, no. If you got any of those coins, I'll buy them off you. Interesting. Nah... I've just seen them around. What's uh, what's in them? Are they are they extra heavy? Well, I I don't know about their weights and stuff. My brother might, but he he does say that they're uh, they got uh, like a a little nugget inside them. Ah. If you didn't have a trained smith's eye, you might not notice that they got a little dot of electrum in them. Electrum's a, a, an alloy of uh, gold and silver. Mm, so a little bit, uh, a little bit, a uh, little special, little special uh, glue in there. How nice! Yeah, if, if if you you got a smith, you can melt melt all of it down for the silver and separate the little bit of gold from it. The guy seems really excited about it. It looks like he was drunk, and you got him talking. Um, it cost you a gold. Uh, it, it cost you a zoller to to buy him another drink to get him to like spill the beans. More he, more he, than happy he, to. He's now telling you things that he probably shouldn't if him and his brother have a scheme to make money. Of course, yeah. the scheme would be if there's a drop, you're talking about less than a gold piece. Like may, maybe the coins themselves are worth more than just a silver zoller. Yeah, yeah. It'd be it'd be good if you could trade a silver for for one of those coins. It'd be worth the trade. Yeah. Yeah, it's and not. It's like it's like somebody. Uh, what do you say? It's like somebody broke up something something really old and put them in each of the coins. Yeah, yeah. It's got. I bet that's just what they did. The little piece has got a nice patina on it. Yeah. Too bad though. Yeah, it makes sense. Weird though. I don't know why any need to do that. I don't know. They're funky looking coins. Hmm. Coming from coming from uh coming from the swamp, but also from uh from uh uh just folks just folks running around. Merchants got them and, and stuff like that. Yeah, you're you're not the only ones asking for them, though. We had some of the plague doctors show up and start asking about them. Interesting. What they want with them? They wanted to buy them. Trying to take your want to buy them? How weird. Yeah. I don't know what they'd need them for. They got good gold. They ought to keep that gold. Maybe they're, maybe they're starting to lose confidence in, in Zollers, and want to have their, their assets in, um, in a more metallic form. If you know what I'm saying. Well, yeah, of course you do. Zollers. I'm not sure up. how long those, that paper's gonna last. Zollers to be can go, Zollers can go up and smoke. It's it's them Absolutely. it's them greedy Patrians. They they like to turn themselves to stone, and they like to sit in their vaults full of gold and silvers. For sure, paper for the rest of us. Yeah, it's, it's a conspiracy, I tell you. Yeah, yeah. Queen it's Iliosa, most, Queen Iliosa is really not. She should be turning into a statue by now. <laughs> nice, nice. Get get a push a little. Push a little bit of my anti-paper money agenda. Uh, no problem with that. Uh, I think I'm going to... So I've spent about four hours gathering information. 
I'll, I'll maybe ask one last question, but I want to run by the team first and, yeah, and tell, it's, them, it's, tell them it's, what I've learned. It's around midnight. Those that want to be drunk are pretty much drunk. Let's go back to uh, <laughs> Pearl Cantina map. I would say Zephyr is pretty sloshed at this point because he's trying to, you know, keep Thurgus entertained and Thurgus is not getting drunk. So Zephyrus is, you know, <laughs> sloshed. <laughs> yeah, Thur Thurgus is just kind of drinking out of habit at this point. Like he's, he, he just feels like his constitution is so mighty that no beverage can, can affect him. So why bother? Um, you, you so he's just kind of drinking to, to, to keep up with everybody else. You kind of le left Henry on his own. Henry seems to be um, like feeling a little bit ill, and he seems to be sweating this weird wax, which he has been feverishly harvesting every 15 <laughs> minutes or so. Very nice, very nice. Uh, he, he's kind of gross because he's like just leaking, so you guys moved over to a table uh, next next to him to keep an eye Keep an eye on I, I know what I want to ask last. Mm. Since the crew's a little bit drunk, I'm just gonna I'm gonna fly solo on this one instead and, and ask on my own. I want to find someone who's been cured by the plague doctors. I want to find someone who's been into that place and ask them uh, uh, what they did. And if I can't find anybody who's been cured in this crowd. That'll tell me something, too. My sister's best friend's uncle got cured. <laughs> okay. All right, give me your gather info. All right. This is the... Using the last two uh, gather info points there, which are plus two apiece, right? Each one is like a little aid. Yep. Um, here we go. 30. Okay. Uh, you find out that nobody in the bar has been cured by a plague doctor. Uh, if you're looking for cures, you should probably talk to Sai. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Everyone here is too poor. There's a lot of that where they can't afford the third level spell cast by a fifth level priest. Fair enough. Fair enough. You get a list of names, but it's all second or third hand. Does Ferris hear any of this going on? Uh, yeah. You see, you see Ferris a talking to people. So you you walk up to Ferris a while she's. Zephyrus is sloshed, and he's just, <clears throat> and he's just furiously like, yes. I'm willing to get the supply in your gamble to get money for the plague. Extra expensive. Find somebody who make lots of money. That's Pick. a good point. Pick. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'll. Uh, I think that's a really good idea. Uh, I spent an hour on that that last one, so I spent five hours total on on gathering info. Yeah, it's five. around one a.m. People are very sloshed. It's not quite as busy as earlier, but uh, the the uh, the noise level is is just as loud. <laughs> I'm just gonna wander around and listen in for people. Uh, uh, what are they sad about? What were they hopeful for when they were when they were betting, um, and see if I can find anyone that was trying to trying to get someone cured, and how much they needed to do it. Interesting. Okay. Cool. That's Where is good, the stage like that, that the bards were playing? Are they still playing? Uh, they they they, they um, pick up a a, a fiddle or a, a lute. Uh, every once in a while, um, okay. they're they're if, playing intermittently. If they ever like take a break or on this set or something like that, I get up on that stage and I just start reenacting everything that happened. And then I was like, "Whoa!" And he was like, "Whoa!" Oh. <laughs> like, right. like I don't I don't get tired of this conversation at all whatsoever. <laughs> like, if anything, people are like, "Yeah, dude, 
we saw it like we were there the other guy was invisible we literally only saw you <laughs> like <laughs> you you have a small crowd of and Zephyros is sticking close by Zephyros is like just sloshed well sloshed but Zeph- in you know <laughs> Makarnam's also on your shoulder yelling um uh, Christopher even though no one can see him is helping you reenact things uh I, I definitely use his version of events too. Like if he tells me something differently, that's right. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And then I was like, <laughs> the in the vicinity of people that don't seem to be really interested in this, Master Logram looks back at you. He shakes his head. He wraps his little cane. He wraps his little cane on the ground and disappears. Huh. He's 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 done. He's 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 done for the evening. <laughs> Um, Polly just watches you while uh, while smoking a cigarette from her cigarette holder. She she's got really weird golden eyes, um, uh, very ostentatious kind of garb. Um, she is the one that sold the contract for Tech Surat Gagat to you guys. She's got mercenary contacts. Uh, people that were betting to try to heal loved ones. Uh, yeah, there's probably half a dozen of people in here that were betting to try to do it. You find um, uh, one person who was on the losing side. And <laughs> um, let's see. Is there any particular reason, or are you, you're just gonna go and make nice? I think just just me. I'm curious who they were gonna who they were gonna uh, pay to to cure um, uh, their, their person. Uh, maybe get, get a name or, or some info about someone who, who who's going around promising cures. Yeah. Okay. We'll say that this hard uh, hard on his luck patron that's kind of stuck off to the side. Uh, he's kind of kept to himself. You notice most of the night he's been drinking the cheap stuff um and he's kind of wobbly by uh by the time you get over there uh, uh what do you want i heard you were heard you were doing this uh doing this as a as a chance to get a get a shot at a cure for for someone you care about what a what a kind thing to want to do. Yeah. Yeah, them doctors ain't all that great. They're just like everyone else in the station. Money just talks. Money, isn't it? money talks. How much are they even asking? Uh I'm not sure, but it's gotta be hundreds. That's a good point. Yeah, they gotta you know be. Yeah, they, they, they look after sick people, but, like, you might get one of the bad doctors and not one of the good ones. I hear they got uh, magic ways of healing it, and some of them just go around poking you with these little sticks and saying, yeah, you're sick. Uh-huh. Yeah, that sounds about right. Mm, never quite trusted me. But they got magic. They They must. They're the queen's physicians, after all. Well, they'd get sick themselves if they didn't have some magic, wouldn't that's they? That's right. That's what I said. How are they keeping themselves healthy, aside from those beaked hats and always wearing suits? Well, maybe that's it. But one of them's got to have been sick. They got their own cures. They're hoarding them for themselves. Probably. Probably. Only the rich get to pay, and well... That fucker over there on stage dancing around like a clown. <laughs> yeah, he's rich now. Uh, and heavily exposed to the plague, if I'm not mistaken. That didn't look fun. Uh, yeah. Is he sick? No, he's lucky. It's almost worse. Uh. Uh. All right. Well, my sister, uh, I might have to bring her to the hospice to see if they've got any, uh, you know, blessings of 
Bashi pay. Duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it is it by Shipei mostly that they that they worship, or is that that blessed maiden they talk about? By Shipei is the goddess of healing. Yeah. Well, those they that must, worship by Shipei up on the plateau, they're gonna charge an arm and a leg. None of us slew slew burrows, uh, could could afford that. We're, we're hoping for the uh, the merciful kind. Yeah. He just sent down those doctors to, to scrape up the last bits of wealth from the slew like they always have and take it upstairs. Yeah. Although, the big doctor's there. You know, the queen's physician. You see him coming and going every once in a while. That's he, an interesting sign. You wouldn't think they'd need him for that, would you? He, he comes down here, maybe... Maybe if we get an audience with him, I could get my sister healed. Perhaps. Perhaps. I promise, if you can get an audience with him and he can't heal you, come and talk to me. Oh, you got healing? I'll find a way. I'm oh. Faye. I'm Trixie. He, he, gives, you I can't he gives you an address that's like three blocks away. Uh, you may want to, I'm sleeping actually at the neighbor's. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. Because, uh, she's real sick. Ah, uh, I understand. I had to tie her up. Oh, how sick enough that she's, has she turned? Well, she don't look like those rotters outside, but... She ain't right. He, he quickly drinks whatever feelings you're <laughs> causing to bubble up. If you can get her to Dr. Davilus, uh, I trust that he may be able to do something. Or get Davilus to come to her, perhaps. Yeah, well, ain't likely a doctor of that caliber coming down to her house calls to the, mm. the tenement that I live in, but... Yeah. Good point. Good point. All right. Next I'll doctor I on. see, I'm going to drag him back there, though. Good. Good. They deserve to do some good in their, in their lives. That's what they're paid for, isn't it? Yeah, if you got... He empties his cup and hands it out to you, almost like he's begging. If you got any donations that can help me... It would be much appreciated. I'll give him, uh, I don't know, like, like, five dollars. Oh, thank you. He he looks at it. And you're pretty sure he's gonna drink some of it. Yeah, fair enough. It's not nothing. It's not a ton. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's an insulting amount. So. <laughs> Good luck. You know who else is perhaps uh, making out because of this? Perfumers, I hear, were doing pretty good. <laughs> Let me just check something. <laughs> this is about Bukerbeck, yeah. yeah. He knows about the perfumers, yeah. <laughs> Bukerbeck looks like he's had, he's had a few drinks as well. Um, Undertakers, but he might have he might have learned a few things in his night of conversation as well. The Vark. Not only do clerics have the ability to remove disease, but oh. so do alchemists. How interesting! I heard that there is a line up in the plateau somewhere outside the alchemist tower selling cures. Only so many per day. But there are some that are capitalizing on this horrible tragedy. Interesting. Interesting. So alchemists up above and plague doctors down here. That is not to say that the priesthoods are not trying to do their best. Some. Oh, I'm sure. Even some of my cloth are 
blinded by the light of money. Yes. Yes, indeed. Let us get Fergus back to the Iron Pine before he makes a fool of himself further. (laughs) That sounds good. And I have never seen Zafiro so tipsy. If he falls over, we're not going to be able to carry him. I can carry him! Party is starting to collect themselves near the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> Nothing good happens after uh, uh, after uh, 13 o'clock. You need sense. some help, Walkers, Feroz. I got you, buddy. <laughs> oh, but you have him for eating or for keeping! Ha ha ha! <laughs> uh, I'm gonna keep oh, it. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, Mockernam's been drinking too. Of course, oh, the oh, will be drinking. Are we leaving now? And not that I didn't sweat out my own body weight in wax or anything. Uh, yeah, you don't look so good. Yeah, I Maybe don't... you should like sleep it off or something. I wasn't gonna go back alone. I Could don't... you like? Press all of that. I've cleaned up enough of it. I've got samples. Don't you worry. Let the wizards handle wizard things, Sturgis. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yes. Now, let's go into the carriage. I'll push the beers. Zephyrus, um, as Zephyrus is walking, because he's a little tipsy, he's having fun. He's casting open clothes on anything you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Just things flipping up and hey! <laughs> Bag opening, a door going uh, open close. Uh, all right, so the, the drunk adventurers eventually leave with their winnings at the Pearl Cantina. Um, I'm going to say uh, one is Professor, two is Zephyrus, three is Ferrisay, four is Thurgus, five would be um, Bukerbeck. Three is Ferrisay. Ferrisay, give me a perception check. <laughs> That's the right one. Um, Sorry, I can't do this for you. I'm too busy reenacting tonight's events. I'm very distracted. 39. Okay. Um, some of the Fae may have got a little uh, touchy-feely with some of your goods. You caught them and sent them on their way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, you, you you don't get robbed. Good thing it wasn't somebody else who was, you know, absolutely blitzed. <laughs> there, was, there was no pickpocketing going on. Uh, you get outside and apparently you're not the only ones who had fun tonight as Edge, Main, and Smoke are, are horses laughing. It's a horrible, hellish horses laughing. Uh, a very horrible sound. It looks like they're kicking uh, kind of uh, uh, zombies that are that are caught in the... Uh, in the barricade, uh, along along the stakes and um, uh, razor wire that have been set up in the uh, the barricade, it doesn't look like they're kicking to destroy them, but they're like kicking to make body parts fall off without without killing the zombies. <laughs> They've been at it for a while, as you can see that there are a number of zombies that uh, did not win the game, and they they come rolling over to you when they see you guys come out. Uh, they're they're kind of. They're kind of giggling. <laughs> oh, did you guys have fun? <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, well, I did. See, what happened is I got down there, right? And I was like, <laughs> And then he starts all over again. <laughs> okay, so Thurgis is chatting them up in the front seat while everyone piles drunkenly into the back. Uh, and the, uh, the carriage brings the group known as the Jerks Emeritus home. Uh, there is nothing that is stopping you from getting a good night's rest. I burn my open fervor in spell slots as healing because I'm still very injured. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Uh, Bookerbeck before... 
he's not as trashed as some of you guys are. Will also, um, I don't know how injured you are. Uh, like 80-ish points. Wow, okay. <laughs> he's got nine channels per day. Nine. Weird. Uh, three base, okay. four charisma, and a feat called extra channel. Yeah, okay. Nice. nice. So he could okay. heal you for... Yeah, he he spends about six of his six or seven of his channels to get uh, you there. Yeah, that's can plenty. You force, can you force us to the right map here, Marty? Oh, never mind, Dan. Never mind. Yeah. It's just uh, uh, zoom up or turn up. As we round the to the front door, uh, I just tell, yeah, and then after I like ripped his face off, and then I was like. Raw, and I turned into a big old pile of blood, and I flew up to the top of the stands and was like, "Whoosh, that's how you do it!" And everyone was like, "Yeah." Okay, it's me and, and Smoke are looking at you. They're, they're kind of tittering. You're not too sure if they're laughing at you or something that they did, but they're they they seem entranced enough as you're describing gore. They they, they you seem to have a topic now that you. Oh, we can that relate you, on blood. That's that you great. relate, yep. <laughs> we bonded. The second you stop, however, they, they, they seem to just go riding off to go amuse themselves while you guys go and sleep. Okay, remember no innocent people. Actually, Edgeman and Smoke, have you seen those uh, those characters wandering around with the beaked masks on? Did they ever meet with your uh, with your master, Archminos? Uh, yeah, yeah. If we yes, said right. we were going to, like, torture them or something for information, would you be amenable to uh, taking us wherever they met? Oh, can we? Are they not innocent? Oh. We're going to find <laughs> out. I suspect not. Yeah, I yeah. suspect they're guilty and juicy. Master Archminos is dead, right? Yeah, I mean, like, like dead, dead, not undead. He's undead. Yeah, but dead, dead. Oh, he's dead, dead. <laughs> Good. They, they, they're looking at you like they're wondering if that's the right thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is good. Uh, anyways, you, you think you can I take mean, us to wherever they met? Yeah, 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 yeah. They. He works with the doctors. That makes sense. He has a a wizard lab where the doctors are. Did he use you to go there very often? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's over by the ruins. Yeah, yeah. You we're got, all, we're the you got like your own parking spot or something. I oh, just pull out front. Well, okay. Okay, fair say. I think I got one of those idea things that, like, uh, the professor is always doing. What if we, <laughs> the, like... The two horses are now just kind of kicking at the dead zombie that's been there for a few days. <laughs> 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 like, they separated the head from the body, and now they're, like, the two horses are trying to <laughs> kick the head. Nice, nice. What if we make ourselves look like Archmanos and pretend like we're just supposed to be there? And then have our way of the place. You know what I mean? I think that makes sense. If he doesn't know Archminos is dead yet, then showing up in Archminos' carriage would make us obvious emissaries of Archminos, wouldn't it? Especially given that we have Professor Henry Sinclair Chalmers III Emeritus among our number, a known friend of the Chalmers. And wearing a Chalmersy ring, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you, you've thought more about this plan than I have. I was just thinking maybe we lock steal his face or something. I'm sober, that's why. <laughs> their fun ends when one of them accidentally or purposefully slams their fiery hoof down upon the, the, the skull, which busts open like a, oh. uh, like a soft melon. Uh, they nip at each other a little bit and then come rolling in a big circle back to your conversation. Yes. Well, you want us to go there now? Task for the morning. 
Morning. All right. Yes, I'm afraid so. If you see any out and about and unguarded, though, um, you could eat one of them. I mean, there are plenty of them. Uh, the two nightmare horses, Smoke and Edgemane, don't need to be told twice. They are now galloping down the street and taking to the air. <laughs> are, are you sure there's not, like, some innocent ones? Do we just do a very questionable thing? I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I guess that's their problem. I'm going to go sleep. I think, but... yeah, I think that's our next move. <laughs> Fair enough. I asked them to pick off solo ones so that uh, they don't get noticed. Thurgis isn't innately, like, you know, driven. He's chaotic neutral. It's not good. We're all, we're all chaotic neutral. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I'm pretty sure the plague doctors are the bad guys. <laughs> sure enough that I don't feel guilt. Not quite positive that I don't kind of wonder what if. There's also plenty of them, so... Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, they might not even find one. Christopher's telling you to go to sleep. You're drunk. Oh, I don't feel drunk at all. Oh, you will soon. It's like sickened for one hour for every drink over twice your con modifier plus one. <laughs> so I can have nine drinks. Everything over nine is one hour of being sickened. You don't know when the spell's <laughs> going to wear off. Uh, when, when what? When the spell's going to wear off. Being awesome? I, I don't know what you're talking about. We're water, we're blood, alcohol. Huh? I mean, when you say it like that, it sounds like they don't mix well, but what? clearly I'm amazing, so I'm going to go to sleep. That's right. Sweet dreams. I'll see you there. It's such a fucking weird thing to say. <laughs> weird for you, maybe, but I, I, I see you in your dreams. Oh, God, don't make me think about that. Shh, I'm going to sleep. Uh -huh. He, like, winces every time that laugh happens. Are you sleeping Curls up in a ball. <laughs> <laughs> no. Stop it, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> sleep harder. He just, like, turns away. Okay, you're left with the horrifying thought of whether or not Christopher, your quasi-imaginary familiar friend, uh, is actually in your dreams. Um, mayhaps you will find out one day. Mayhaps. The night goes by. Um, some of you are hung over the next morning. Bukrebeck uh, has gathered with all of you as you... Um, go into the kitchen he actually gathers with the party before preparing his spells um before praying to bampa damadamba he's i'm interested in knowing what you are well what you are planning this day that's mighty fine but do you have to speak that loud <laughs> My, what big ears you have, Zephyrus! <laughs> Zephyrus just looks at him, and after a while, he, he just he, he just turns his, his spell book and he goes, "I'm considering casting mending on myself. Don't make me change this into a fireball up your ass." Uh, uh, Zephyrus, come here, come here, and I cast remove sickness. Oh, that feels much better. And then I cast it on myself because I feel terrible. Okay, Book Rebecca is going to cast a tech disease on Thurgus to make sure that he is indeed free of the blood veil. Um, and it apparently Thurgus is fine. <clears throat> Amazing. You are in the mouth of that creature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, right? Maybe because it's like contagion. Uh, it's transmitted by blood, and the blood god 
was like, oh, you can't have that. I'm going to make sure I clean you out. So, like, he made sure my blood wasn't infected. That's right. I did it. Huh? Yeah, that must be it. It was on me. Sure. I mean, clearly something did it. Oh, what are we doing today? Well, we've got a few options. Um, if we want to pull an Archminos ruse of some sort, we need to do it fast, because otherwise they'll find out he's dead. And then they'll be less receptive to us. Uh, we should try and figure out if we want to, to get more proof on the Plague Doctors, or if we want to turn in the proof we have. I need to work on the rod of power. <clears throat> um, so yes. at some point, I need to spend some time doing that. If you guys want to go investigate, I can stay behind and do some work. Otherwise, I can go with you. It depends on the level of danger we anticipate. Oh, I think the level of danger is probably relatively high. Uh, relying on, on Henry to bluff his way in. Yeah, of course I could do that. But to what point? I'll be in there with a bunch of sick people. True, true. Well, you need to figure out what they're doing. No need, mm. no need to bluff with just bringing the carriage nearby. Those two horses are insane. They likely just wandered around outside when Archimedes was alive. It'll at least Quite allow right. us to get close. The windows are tinted. Yes, yes. And you you have the ring that suggests you are uh, the heir of your father and grandfather. Yes. Perhaps Archminos sent you to check on their progress. you could make them see whatever they need to see to to verify it. Perhaps Archminos himself is in the carriage. Um, and you two have a conversation. And he waves and points at you. Who knows? I'm sure there are many ways of getting inside. Do we want uh, to talk to them or do we want to spy on them? Wait, wait a minute. Um, Ar oh, Archimedes was one of those um, guys who's allergic to daylight, right? Yes. Maybe he's not in the carriage. Well, he has the sun cream that uh, lets uh, him go out in the day. Got it. Got it. But he might prefer to stay out of direct sunlight. The hospice is in the slough. We might as well take a look. I'm I'm fine with spy on them. I'm Let's not a big fan it. of talking to them anyway. But I can be ready to bluff if we need. I can hide. This is Pixel. Yes. We'll we'll have you uh uh find peek in all the windows and go down all the chimneys. Oh, I can turn into a basket. Or a bucket, or a pail, which is kind of like a bucket, but it insinuates it's metal. A purse, a backpack, a barrel, a doctor's bag. That one's tempting. That, that one, that one, yeah, it'd be nice. You've seen one before, and it was a plague doctor's bag. Yeah, I could just turn into one, but... I'm pretty heavy. That's the problem with that ruse. Ah. Well, that's true. Yeah. I suppose you could sit there in place of some real doctor's bag, and when they go to pick you up, you could eat them. Ah, uh, for keeping? Uh, Whichever. Whatever. Ah, <laughs> oh, for eating. 
maybe spit out the the crunchy uh, the crunchy outer shell of uh, uh, expensive magical things. Well, maybe I'm just and a heavy doctor's bag. That could be it too. Yeah, Zephyrus can carry a doctor's bag. Well, yeah, he, he carries me around, uh, so he could definitely carry a doctor's bag. Thurgus could carry a doctor's bag, I suppose. Yeah, Thurgus is strong, even though he's smaller than Zephyrus. I'm working on it. Can we dress? I him have up? my days. <laughs> Little spindly tendrils coming at a macronom, kind of measuring, kind of like <laughs> measuring the difference between Zephyrus's height and yours. I oh. like, I like stretch out. You know how like bears like really hunch back. Like yep. I just try and like like stretch out as much as possible. But in fact, Thurgus, you have one of their masks. Oh yeah. And now you've got one of their bags. Maybe yeah, and I could easily them. bluff my way in there. Take take a look. <clears throat> I am a doctor. Let me see the sick people out of my way. Oh my god, a doctor's come into our house! How is that for a bluff? Uh, it was pretty bad. <laughs> well, I thought it was pretty good. Are it's you it's saying it's you want to take the mask yet. then? And give that to somebody else. Yep. We could dress up Henry. Uh, uh, we could potentially dress up me. Um, I can certainly bluff my way in if needed. Uh, Mockerdam turns into a doctor's bag. You need a 39 perception check to see it as not a doctor's bag. <laughs> yeah, no. In fact, oh, I guarantee we could get in. Now, we may not want to. We may just want to scout the place first. But to get in, dress me up as a doctor. You'll carry the bag for me because you're my um, prize that I have collected for them because they have a very strong interest in inherited races. And then we'll just walk right in. So what do we do? Do we just stay outside? You're also an inherited race. Perhaps I've, uh, perhaps I've also encouraged you to come. And Henry is Professor Henry Sinclair Chalmers, grandson of the necromancer, yeah, yeah, emissary right. of Arcminos. Okay, so I'll just hang back and pretend to be a plus one to whatever you're doing. Sure, I'm maybe you're a traitor to your own kind. I would never suggest that you actually are, of course. Of course. I know you better than that by now. You could act as if the professor has charmed you. Yes. There are many act. people in the slew... Although he would never be able to charm me. There are many people in the slew that know who you are. <laughs> That's a fair point. We are the Jerks Emeritus, and so it might... It might be suspicious if the Jerks Emeritus finally uh, decided to, to join. But the professor, eh? I have illusions, but they're not the type that can fully disguise who you are. True, true. For that, we would need some sort of altering spell. Yes. You guys don't have alter self, do you? don't think so. We have a hat of disguise. No, we don't have that. Alter I... Self is a low-level polymorph spell. I have Reduce Person, but that's only for minutes. Well, it depends how long we think our ruse is going to work. <laughs> Perhaps not that long. Or... We could land, swords out, and fuck everyone up. It is a classic move, but uh, <laughs> we might be in our, over our heads with this one. All right, well, I'm out of ideas. So uh, I vote... Farisay is our leader for today, and she will pick. Curses. All in favor? 
Yeah. Yeah, like elbows, Zephyrus. Pi yeah, Zephyrus Zephyr does that as well. But <laughs> Zephyrus also goes, well, we should just get some cloaks and get them to cover as much of us as we can. Sure. I can definitely make us look bloody, says the professor. Doesn't he have that blood spell? Who has the hat of disguise? What what is that I, torrent I of blood or something there. like that? I don't actually see it at the moment though. Waves of blood. Oh yeah, there it is. A hat of disguise. <clears throat> What does that do? Uh, it lets you appear as any equal sized race, I think. I think it just functions as um, disguise self. I can cover us in blood with my waves of blood spell if we want to appear to be sick. Ah. Well, that's a thought. We could all go in as sick ones. Oh, didn't they say something about um, only wanting to see the rich people. What if I go over there and I'm like, oh, I got so much money now, but I'm I'm pretty sure I'm sick because I fought a zombie yesterday, so I need you to take a look at my wounds. I like that plan. Some of, the most, that some of the most convincing illusions I have are not illusions at all. <laughs> Let's play him hmm. with his gigantor mustache. <laughs> but look, if, if we're well known, then why don't we just play into that? Uh, I, I got sick. So I guess he's sick and we're his rich friends. Yes. Yes. Which, after tonight, is kind of actually true. If you don't mind, could I borrow the Plague Doctor's mask? Just for the just for the day. Excellent. I'm just gonna stuff it in a little bag. Um, what if we do dress you up like a plague doctor, and you're leading the rich friends and the sick Thurgus uh, into the building? That's a winner. I'll put it on. All right. Yes. Yes. Oh, I can bluff my way in. Doctor's bag. Yes. Yes. Doctor's bag, indeed. I mean, um, if, if you're the one bluffing, the the mask functions as a ring of mind shielding. So that's actually going to be really nice. Cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I'm also a very good bluffer. Um, <laughs> Pixels cheering that you have a plan with um, uh, glibness. <laughs> what shall I do? It would be suspicious for a priest of Bombadama Damba to not be helping you get healing. True, true, true. If you wish, you can come along. I, I am perhaps curious. You, perhaps you would like to, uh, uh, since they have the clientele and you have the skills... Perhaps you would like to make a deal where you would sell them some of some of your services. Hmm. Regardless, I would very much like to bear witness if they're doing anything fell. This hospice name does insinuate that they are invoking the blessings of Vaishi Pei without actually saying the goddess's name. Be if most these supportive. plague doctors are indeed spreading this thing and taking the god's name in vain. And yes. profiting off of it themselves? Mm. How absurd. Perhaps I will wait in the carriage. You can come in if you like, but it could get dangerous. I do not have a way to disguise myself. Hmm. Do, we do have a hat. You could borrow the hat. It could make you look like not exactly you, but it might not be an amazing disguise. Who is the most threat? 
aside from Fergus? Oh, I suspect, um, I suspect Zephyros. I missed the question. I was looking at my spell book. What are you asking? The most dangerous looking. Yes. You know that it mimics disguise self and, um, the professor says, uh, you have to maintain you have to stay as the same creature type. And in this world, humanoid inherited races are the same creature type. So okay. Zephyros could appear with the hat to not be a... Uh, a fant. A fant, or look like a completely different fant. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I should not appear like a fant. You could be like... Yes. A you, you could be like a giant slave or something. Yes, that's probably not a bad idea. Or like an ogre bodyguard. A hat is a head slot. I don't know if this complicates anything, but... But it's not a headband slot. It's not a headband slot. No. It doesn't complicate. I'm going to paste it onto your character sheet. There you go. Did you want to take the Plague Doctor's mask from mine? Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Go for we'll it. switch these guys around. I just didn't want to stomp on your changes. Yeah, no problem. So who's, whose character sheet did you place the hat on now? Uh, yours, Zephyrus. It should be there in the head slot. I'm taking a look. Bookerbeck takes off his yep. priest's robes and, nice. and folds them neatly. He then just puts on, like, the undershirt. He's got still the undershirt and his armor on, but he just takes off his robes and puts them off to the side. He takes his holy symbol and stuffs it underneath the, uh, underneath the, underneath the, uh, uh, chest portion of his chain shirt. Do we have anything that looks Plague Doctor Roby? I'm sure that we do because we've seen we've been in contact with play doctors and all sorts of things plenty of times. So I'm sure in our loot bag, Let's see, there would be something. Sifting through your uh, undivvied treasure, there's a robe of useful items, which it more looks like a patchwork robe with like different pockets in it. There hmm. is a necromancer's robes. Act as braces of armor plus two plus one DC to necromancy spells. And those, what did we get those off of? We uh, got those off of the dead Turk, uh, uh, the dead plague doctor driving the train. I think. Correct. Yeah, I will put those on to complete the disguise. Nice. That seems like a winner. Um. They don't do any anything particularly useful for me, but that is fine. Uh, what are those? Those are um, a body slot, yeah? Yep. Which I think I actually have open. If you do not mind, I will put on this strange uh, patchwork robe. Absolutely. You look good in it. Now, where did it go? I was just looking at it. Robe of useful items. Blink. Are you telling him what those what the thing does, or are you just letting him uh, use it as a disguise for now? It's a robe of useful items. Every patch means something. Uh, it uh, pull off a patch, and it's the thing that uh, the patch looks like. Ah. Not real. Ooh, a rowboat and some dogs. <laughs> Great. What you've always wanted, Bukrebek, a rowboat and some dogs. Does a window actually create the window inside the wall? Uh, yeah. Uh, yep. I don't know. I've never used one. Can I spell grab that? Yeah, yeah. It, it, I think our spell it, it, it might against a non-magical 
um, like a normal wall, sure. There might be protections yeah. against it. Otherwise, it's the best rogue I have ever. <laughs> it pretty much does, yes. <laughs> You can't use it on, like, a super magical wall, but uh, if we were tossed into a locked room in the back, we could probably just open a window out. Interesting. Hey, hmm. hey, hey Marty. Yep. So for today, um, Christopher is going to take his one-point evolution as tentacle. Okay. And he's going to grow that on Thurgus in like a random spot and that's going to be sort of why I th I'm so convinced that I'm sick I've literally grown a blood tentacle out of my body huh. okay it's kind of coming out of your gut like you may have like a really bad wound <laughs> it like peeks out of the top of my <laughs> breastplate Ooh. oh that's interesting uh, what the fuck is this <laughs> oh very nice, very nice. So, it, can, it can hold so, things for you, right? Uh, I mean, technically it's a secondary natural attack. But yeah, it could. It's just a large sinuous tentacle. The secondary deals a d4. In this case, it just gives me a reason to say that I'm I'm sick, right? Because it's, it's very real. So... Zephyrus uh, says to Ferrisse, does it look like I'm walking naturally? And he's walking. He's, he's faking walking because remember, he doesn't walk normally. Right. Well, right. Y yes, that looks that looks pretty good. It's very convincing. Okay, I'll just do that. I don't think so. Be but it'll make it look like I'm walking. Yeah, that sounds good. Oh, because you're because you overland, flight, overland right? flight. Yeah, yeah. So, so Zephyrus, every day he's got the Yoden spoon, so it's a lesser meta, metamatic magic rod of extend. So he uses that with the overland flight. So most of the time he's like he's eighteen like hours of walk. flight. Yeah, eighteen hours of flight today. That's awesome. Are you guys headed out today? Or are you spending time to rest and do crafting spell stuff? I, I think we need probably a good week to do to do what we really need to do next. And also, um, Thurgus needs to recover. He looks he looks good, except oh, for that. We, oh, did we did we did we get all the damage I'm, healed? I'm great. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Thur Thurgus is in tip top shape. I okay. I think Booker I could have healed good. most of that myself, to be honest. Um, okay. But Bukerbeck got me in in good hit points. Aren't actually that hard of a problem to solve. Um, if I get like some really nasty diseases, then we're we're talking about burning third level spell slots. But right now, um, Thur Thurgus is in good shape. If you're heading oh. out today, Booker Beck holds you up by an hour. He's gonna prepare his spells. Uh, he asked Henry after he's done, "Guess what spell I prepared today?" Oh, oh, can I guess? Is it that anchor thing? Oh, shut up, Booker Beck. <laughs> you delightful. <laughs> become a running gag <laughs> between <laughs> between the two of them <laughs> it's a good one uh smoke and edge main arrive and you can see that smoke and edge main have nibbled to like near shreds a plague doctor's uh um face mask they're still kind of like nipping and pulling at it it's covered in blood. Ah. We got one. Yeah. <laughs> A righteous feat, the both of you. I'm sure. Oh, good job. And I think he was a bad guy. Deserved every bit of it. Uh, what disguise sure. did you take on Zephyrus? With the head of disguise, Zephyrus just looks like a big slave. Okay, but you're remaining as a fan. 
Uh, humanoid, just a humanoid slave. Like a giant, or no, just a giant. Uh, you you have to choose a uh an inherited race, so you could be a okay. fan. Uh, ogre. Uh, no, ogre. Inherited, as in oh, an, okay. an animal race. Oh, an animal race. Uh, it'll be something other than a fan. Maybe a little bit of a rhino. Or uh, yeah, you could do a uh, a Nazarov. Give me a second. Yeah. So you, yeah, you're just kind of a really big Nazarov dressed like a dressed like a servant or slave. All right. Uh, the hat of disguise allows you to make a disguise check at a plus ten. Yeah, for purposes of like bane weapons and that sort of thing, uh, you could get multiple races with the same. But yeah, um, humanoid inherited would be the yeah. Give me a give me a, give me a second. You cannot change your creature type, which would be humanoid, although you can appear as another subtype. Never mind, you can appear as an ogre. Yeah, ogre is fine. Oh uh, no, sorry, ogre is giant. Oh, That's not the same they're, subtype. They're giant, then, you, yeah. you could appear as a half giant, like an ogreish looking half giant. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I mean, I mean, the only the intent that we have here is to just have Zephyrus A not looks like look like Zephyrus. Yep. And B look less intimidating or less threatening. So that's basically what you are and what you're turning into. Okay, cool. That works. Uh, I need a disguise check at plus 10, which is a charisma check plus 10 if you don't have any ranks in disguise. Let me check. I don't think I have any ranks in disguise. Pretty sure I don't. Uh, no, I don't. So charisma plus 10. So charisma is negative one. I'm okay. going to say plus that Pharisee and Professor can provide a plus two. Actually, Makarnam as well. They provide aids because they're good at illusions slash bluffing slash turning into other things. So they're going to give you a plus six as they, as they give you pointers on how to make yourself look not like you. Okay, so plus six turns my nine into a plus 15. All right. 31. 31. All right, so you've got your half giant disguise at a 31. I've put that on your token. Yeah, super nice. Uh, Bukrebeck has disguised himself as not a priest, um, which may or may not be obvious once he starts casting spells. I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee. He'll, he'll get the bonuses from the party. He rolls a nat 20 and gets a 30. He looks like some sort of... He looks like some sort of vagabond. Vagabond servant. Very nice. Yeah, everyone's all dressed up. Uh, uh, okay, so let me get the story straight. You guys are pretending not to be yourselves. Pharisee's pretending to be a doctor. So, like... You came and found me because you thought I was sick. I got this weird thing growing out of me, and you convinced me to come here to treat me. Is that right? Well, yes. You... Absolutely. You got me to I, a... I, I promise that Dr. Davilus can help you, especially with your means. S stand against the wall over there. I'll make you all bloody. Yeah, all right. I'm going to stand up against the wall. There's a 30-foot cone-shaped burst of roiling blood. <laughs> just, Do I just... get knocked prone? <laughs> uh, uh, he he will try to knock you prone because he's, <laughs> he's trying to prove a point. Uh, he gets to roll his caster level, which is 9, plus his intelligence bonus. Which is is it against my... Am I flat-footed? No, no, it's just okay. against your CMD. You you knew it was coming. 
Okay. Just plus 10? What? He rolls a nat 20. Yep, you uh, <laughs> you get blasted so far into the wall, you actually took damage. What's your CMD? 32. He, wow. He did six damage to you by blasting you into the wall with the fire hydrant <laughs> of blood. <laughs> what type of damage? Uh, it just bludgeoning. This is you hitting the wall. Okay. I have the bone shirt, so I was just curious. Um, okay. Yeah, that bypasses bludgeoning. Yep. So, yeah, and then um, there's a fortitude save or be sick from just the, the stench of the blood. Oh, I don't know if I can make his saves. Did we do this? We did this outside, right? Yeah, did he's do doing this, this outside? outside against the side of okay. your, your building, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Stand over there near the drain. <gasps> oh. <laughs> a 20, uh, 26 save? Uh, 1323, yes, you made the save. So you're not sick. It only lasts for a short round. It's all slick. You are just dripping in this blood and then eventually starts to dry a little bit. Uh, Bukerbeck throws you, uh, throws you a towel, um, which is pretty much just a, a blood-soaked rag by the end of it. Okay. I, I play around with the little tentacle a little bit, like I poke it, and it's just like... It'll dry by the time you get there. Okay. Oh, right. Oh, God. I feel disgusting, but also slightly blessed. Let's go. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look disgusting, but slightly blessed. We'll just tell them that you were digested by a giant zombie. I mean, it's not wrong. Hmm. hmm. I'll stay out the outside the carriage again. <laughs> Okay, Bukerbeck the Vagabond and Zephyros the uh, the Servant, uh, Makarnam the Giant. The, he's small, like a doctor's bag, but he's heavy, so the Servant is carrying him. And then Ferrisay, your disguise check for you dressing up like a plague doctor. Oh yeah, I'm not great at that, but I am good at bluff. Um... I don't have any Could you wear right... the necromancer robe? I am wearing the necromancer okay. robe. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to give you a plus four because you are wearing the accoutrements of a plague doctor. But putting Fair on enough. a hockey putting on a hockey helmet doesn't make you a hockey player. So uh, there's also a plus two because you get an aid from the professor and an aid that from Mokernam as they are helping in different ways. All right, so that's just a straight charisma check, which is not bad. That's a plus six. Um, and then uh, what were the aids? Uh, two for having robes and the and the hood or and the mask, and then yep. another. Uh, no, sorry, that was four, and then another four from the professor helping you as well as Mokernam helping you. Yeah, sounds good. 26. All right, so you've got a disguise, which which is no, a non-magical disguise as a plague doctor or a queen's physician. Um, cool. And then you ride Edgemain and Smoke. Are you, are you riding through the city or are you flying through the city? I mean, may as well fly, yeah. We're not we're not trying to not make an entrance here, I suppose. So may as well just uh, kind of drop in from. I think ask them to to well, well why don't why don't you just ask them to go the normal way? Uh, that seems pretty good. Hey, could you guys just like go whichever way you went before? Before what? You know, with the other guy. You said you've been there before, right? Yeah, yeah. You call so us just like you go that us, way. You calling us stupid? N no. Yeah, we could get there. Okay, cool. We'll do that then. All right, they uh, they fly over um, the slough. Uh, 
they fly over the buildings maybe by about 60 feet, but they don't fly so high that they are flush with the plateau. It seems like either they've they've learned something or this is just the way that they fly. A few times they they laugh and as they they hit the tops of buildings like with with some huh. of the uh, with the with the wheels of the wagon knocking off uh, some weather vanes and and just sort of being generally disruptive. Um, they calm down when they get closer to the uh, from the skies closer towards the ruinous area of uh, the gray district. The gray district is a place full of graveyards. Uh, it has it has some older temples. Um, it there are some slums around it. There are entire uh, blocks where it's just um, uh, like chiseled slate, like all the stone of the previous building has been carted away, leaving behind sort of a gravelly uh, ruin. Uh, some of the buildings have fallen into disrepair. Uh, their stone basements and uh, lower lower walls simply crumbling. Uh, the place has a pallor that clings to it just just this um this morose shadow of death you do land in front of a um a newer building um it's maybe 30 40 years old as opposed to uh as opposed to a hundred or so uh it is the upper floors are made of wood um, heavy wooden construction, but it, it seems to be based upon maybe an older stone foundation. You land right in front of it, and you do see a sign above the, uh, above the door, and I'm going to force you guys to a new map. New map, new map. Uh, the sign above the door has been uh, written in calligraphy, the hospice, the hospice of the Blessed Maiden. Curiously, there are no motifs that suggest worship of Baishi Pei. I'm going to throw a whole bunch of stuff on, on myself on the ride over. Okay. Uh, which will be on the token. Although... So Ferris we'll takes that. a moment to, do, to remind Ferris, like, just remember... Here is a slave. You need to instruct me. <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> I mean, I promise not to take advantage of this. This yes. place looks like more like a warehouse than it does a hospice, but the sign does say hospice. Um, immediately when you ride up to the place, you do notice that there are um, crutches and bandages and maybe even signs of blood in the in the street uh just outside of the hospice there doesn't seem to be a lot of activity here although the there must be a lot of activity inside because there's like a like um smoke coming out of the chimney all right i'll hop out come on join us all so ferris hops out okay um, Fergus, this is the place I was telling you of, where your wealth will buy you the cure you need. Ferrisay, Thurgus, Zephyros, you can hear the coughing already from inside. You slave, get my bag. Zephyros turns around, goes, goes pick up the bag. Oh, that's me. Where did that voice come from? I don't know. Uh, Zephyrus just moans like a slave that has no opinion. Oh, pick me up! Can I take um, a look at the uh, the ground where these discarded sort of bandages and things are and try and get a sense of like maybe a, a yeah. signs of a struggle or something? No, it just looks like people may have been waiting along the sides of the building. My question is, did they leave peacefully or were they murdered and shooed away? Is my is my like what I'm curious about. Um, yeah, give me a survival check if you're gonna start poking around. 
37. Little column A, little column B. Some people look like they were waiting for maybe a day or so. Others uh, may have packed up quickly. The blood that you do see is probably from someone sitting there and bleeding as opposed to a fight. Got it. Okay. Uh, you, you can hear a horrible amount of coughing and some whining children, Pharisee, and you can hear a motherly voice saying, Yes, I know. Yes, I know. We need to wait. Uh, Pixel, go take a look through the back windows real quick and see if you can figure out where the good, where the ent- if there's a if there's a VIP entrance. Okay. You do see that this place is big enough that it ha- it must have an upper floor. Uh, There is a second floor, although the second floor doesn't have any obvious uh, windows from the face that you're on. I'm just going to expose the outline of the second floor. We brought Booker back, so it will (laughs) at some point. (laughs) Uh, Are you waiting for Pixel to return? She disappears around the side of the building. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to to give a bit of a speech about um, about how wonderful our our leader is and how um, how how surely uh uh you know thurgus's wealth will 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 help get him the best possible treatment the doctor will be so happy to see him okay pixel comes back uh this place is a this place is boarded up uh there's no there's there's big doors out back i think they're for wagons uh okay okay um i don't see any in that case i'll I don't see any windows, she says, and uh, she says that there aren't any windows on the upper floor either. How interesting. If there were, they've been covered up long ago or maybe built with a different purpose. All right, all right. Um, I will just open the door like I belong here. Okay, you open the door immediately. Um, you can feel the warmth of the waiting room as there are uh, four men that are uh, off to one side in front of a long counter and then two whining children and a woman off to the right. Uh, it looks like they are all waiting. It also looks like they're all in various degrees of uh, having the blood veil. Uh, the woman is actually, like, wiping bloody tears from her children. And the men, there's one guy, this guy in the hat, that's just coughing really loud while the others are just so miserable and probably sick enough that they're just putting up with it. There is a heavy door at the back of the waiting room and some and some chairs. Uh, there is There are a few, uh, there's a big book that is closed, and you notice that there are some, like, dirty bandages. And, uh, All right. Uh, there's a doctor's prod like it, it's like a rod that has a little handle on it and it, it the handle opens up and there's a little spike so you could like pinch oh. things from afar you could just see that it lying it's still dripping with some pus from whatever it was used on before it doesn't look like this place as well is very clean yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. at least this front half of the room isn't all right i'll i'll take a step in and say uh, out of my way <laughs> Okay. No, I will go and get someone to help you, but you must you must wait your turn. I will bring someone shortly. Out of my way. I'm first. Important business is coming through. Okay. Um, the peasants are really slow to move off to the side. I will give them a moment. I don't want them to reach out and touch me. <laughs> okay, give me uh, an intimidate check. You're that's a fair point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are we looking at for that? Yeah, okay. That's just charisma. Um, Twenty. All right. Uh, these they step aside. The the guy who's hacking and coughing seems to pay more attention to the blood that is now in his handkerchief. You are able to walk past the group uh, behind the counter to the to the big door. Come, the rest of you, clear a path. I will bring someone to help you. I promise. Okay. 
they they do shuffle off to the side. They're not in combative squares, so they uh, they do come with you. Uh, there's an awful lot of coughing in this front room as you guys pass through. Is Pixel Bukabrek will Bukabrek, hide. Yeah, Bukabrek's going to follow in. Yep. Okay, uh, you get to this uh, heavier door, and you can hear what sounds like a gymnasium full of people hacking and coughing and moaning. Um, well, I suppose the handle's not going to work on this, so I'll I'll give a little rap on the door. Okay, you do hear a like a bar sliding. And there is a massive room filled with people on cots in various states of blood veil and other maladies. Um, there are several uh, uh, plague doctors that are wandering amongst the uh, uh, wandering amongst the sick, and there is this rotund, beefy nurse lady. <laughs> That is blocking your way. What? Oh! Let's see if she sees through your disguise. Uh, Oh my. 15. Oh. What is it? She she looks at Thurgus and looks at Zephyros. She's she's asking the question directly of you. This one, I point to Thurgus, is very important. I wave with my blood want tentacle. To see him right away so that we can help cure him. He's the winner of a recent fight and has come into some wealth how, and he is ursine how important he's ursine he's very important so the the come now you know you know what the master is looking for put him find a cart and put him in there the doctors will go and, and examine him <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, of of course. I wink. Um, although I don't know that you can see the eyes through the mask anyway. No, there, there's an empty cot over there. I'm just pointing to here. Good, 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 good. All right. Um, I will uh, walk in. Come in. Bring the bag. Okay. She steps off the side. She's got a. Uh... A clipboard, you notice her writing something in the clipboard. Um, I am going to walk with purpose right towards this back office area, maybe? Okay. Are you... Where's Thurgus going? With me. You? me I'm following. No, no. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna order him to follow. Over there, row, row four. Did you not hear the part with a whole bunch of money? And then I wave at her with the tentacle again, and also the fucking tentacle out of his chest. Okay. You've promised him a certain level of service. I'll give you a cut. She. She points to the to the back of the room. You see, there are two gray maidens playing cards at a table. Ah, oh, wonderful. And uh, in that case, we will go down the aisle here. You also, Thurgus, you down also notice church. up. Your warrior instinct is to look up once in a while. And there are catwalks above this big building. This is definitely not a hospice. This was once like a, a, a warehouse. And you can see a couple of gray maidens up top. They do have um, 
they do have bows on their back, uh, probably strength bows, and they they are now watching this group of people come in, uh, i.e., you. Uh, the, the nurse, you you kind of you kind of annoyed the nurse, but they didn't do anything. Those, these two plague doctors looked up. These two are continue their discussion. Um, uh, you haven't caught the attention of the ones in the back yet. I will um, gesture like up um, to Pharaoh say, are you sure this is the right place? It seems like a, a lot of hardware for a medical sort of thing. Oh, I promise you. Dr. Davilus is going to be very interested in your condition and will be most intrigued by your uh, by your your particular state. Yeah, all right. Hello, Doctor. Oh. What do we have here? There are a couple that their voices are nasally through the through the helmet. Uh, one this is... one appears to be human in size. The other one might be halfling or gnome. Um, uh, they, they approach you when they see there's a big commotion. This one is named Thurgus. He is of interest to the master and has come to us with a great deal of, of, uh, winnings from his recent battle with a plagued creature. Uh, he can pay? course but look at him have you seen others of his kind he will need special attention i'm sure we will all be well rewarded for doing this important work yes yes i see um let's, let, if the beds are all packed let us save them for others come Indeed, indeed. What's bring the bag? Come. What's with the fat? Ah, Archminos, uh, uh, gave me a servant. Isn't that nice? Oh, well, isn't that nice? You can give me a servant. Uh, mm. Give me a bluff. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Uh, let's see here. Bluff is plus. 37 right now. I think there was a hero point immediate use drop too. Yep, a fortune point plus two. Fortune point, yeah. Oh, sure. Uh, this is going to be a good one. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, beat that. All right, they lead <laughs> you right back through this area. Uh, one of them, one of them goes off, ducks off. To Should the have side. gone with I am Davalos. <laughs> <laughs> one of them ducks Take off me to myself. No. One of them ducks off to the side to have a conversation with these these two plague doctors. They look a little um, leaner and meaner. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and while the other one is, yes, yes, a special clientele, wait back here. It's not much, but at least you won't be with everyone else. And you see that you're in like a big loading, uh, a loading bay, like, um, these doors are off the ground. It's like they, they're probably for loading wagons. Um, it appears that there's a bunch of stuff that might be left over from whatever this place was before. There's a spider web of ropes and pulleys that crisscrosses the ceiling. Um, there are some barrels still in the nets. Um, there might be, there's a curious smell, Thurgus, of incense in this room. You do see various tools that you wouldn't expect to be, like, sledgehammers and pickaxes and some shovels, um, kind of st st uh, stashed in one of the one of the boxes. Uh, he he just basically writes a uh, uh, a bench. Yeah, you can wait here. Doctor, if I could speak to you outside for a moment. Certainly. Okay, yeah, they, he's inviting Thurgus to stand there. Yeah, um, or just okay. sit there. Okay. 
Is that fat going to give us any trouble? No, of course not. Your servant. Oh, okay, good. He, he closes the door to have this conversation. He's well trained. Mm. You know that Archmenus' servants, uh, they don't go 